Third wheel spin. Let's go. What are we doing? Gyruda combo. Boy, I hope this deck's good. All right, so this is Gyruda combo. And to explain, this deck is entirely centered around the card Gyruda Doom of Depths. So what is Gyruda? Well, it's a companion, first of all. And it says, it's a six mana blue slash black six, six creature. And it says, when it enters the battlefield, each player mills four cards, put a creature card with an even mana value from among the milled cards onto the battlefield under your control. So we therefore want to do the following, have our deck filled with as many even costed creatures that either copy Garuda or blink it so that we can keep going and going as much as possible. So we basically mill over a creature that is either copying Garuda or blinking it to get the trigger again, which mills our deck more, which gets the trigger again, et cetera, et cetera, until we eventually either uh, mill our opponent out and then just pass the turn or have a massive board full of creatures and then kill the opponent with those creatures. So what do we have? So first to set up, we need to be able to actually ramp into this. You know, Garuda is a six mana creature and with the new companion rules, it's three mana to get it out of our companion zone. So we do need a lot of ramp and all of the ramp has to be even. So we cannot play Elvish Mystic or Lana or Elves. We are therefore running Sylvan Karyatid, Wolf Willow Haven, and Paradise Druid as our means of ramp. We also have Prosperous Innkeeper, which can generate a treasure token and gain us a bunch of life on the turn that we put a bunch of creatures into play. And we have Warping Whale as well, which while not a creature can technically make a Scion token to ramp, or we can use it to counter certain things like Emergent Ultimatum would be a big one, or Storm of Festival would be another big one. So from there, we then have Bring in the Clones. So Spark Double is our most important clone. It is a four mana clone, and it says, you may have it enter as a copy of a creature or Planeswalker you control, except it enters with an additional plus one counter on it if it's a creature and an additional loyalty counter on it if it's a Planeswalker. And the most important part, the last line, and it isn't legendary. So it copies Garuda, but it's not legendary and therefore we get to keep it. We also have Clever Impersonator, which can copy Garuda or anything else. Maybe our opponent has a giant bomb or something that we want to copy, who knows. We've got Undercover Operative, which is a clone that enters with a shield counter on it. If, you can, if you're copying a creature you control, but we're copying Garuda. So if it would be dealt damage or destroyed, instead you remove the shield from it. So it's a temporary regeneration power, basically. And then we have Vizier of Many Faces. This is enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature except Vizier. If Vizier was embalmed, the token has no mana cost, is white, and is a zombie in addition to its other type. So this is a clone that if we mill this over and we like brick, so let's say we like do the combo and brick, right? Then Vizier is at least a card that's in our graveyard that we can embalm back and maybe go off again. We then have four Wisp Weaver Angels, four mo six mana, four, four flyer. Enters, you may exile another target creature you control and return it to the battlefield. So this blinks Garuda. We then have, of course, the other three copies of Garuda in the main. We've got Progenitor Mimic, which is a clone that on upkeep clones itself again. So you make a token that's a copy of it. And then Dragonlord Colagon, 6 mana, 6, 5, Flying Haste. Other creatures you control have haste. That's the main crux of it. It also says whenever an opponent casts a creature or Planeswalker spell with the same name as a card in their graveyard, they lose 10 life. So if they cast the second copy of whatever they've already spent, they take 10. But primarily, the plan is going to be mill a bunch of stuff over and get as many copies of Spark Double and whatever, you know, Whisper Reaver Angel and whatever else we have, and then get Colagon at the end give everything haste, swing in for our opponent, and then we have Altered Ego. This is a four mana clone, but it is uncounterable. It enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it enters with X plus one, X additional plus one counters. So we can play this later on as like a bigger clone, but it's primarily just going to be a clone that comes back with Garuda. So that's the main plan. We have a essentially bug colored mana base, although we are playing other things. So Aether Hub, because we might need to fix for like, I don't know, Colagon or something. Blast Zone, One Besage You. Crystal Grotto is a land that enters and scries. It only makes colorless, but we do need to absolutely make sure that we try to get Garuda on curve. One Forest, three Lana Waste, one Odawara, Temple of Malady and Temple of Mystery. We don't have any one drops in the deck because we are playing all even in order to comply with Garuda's companion requirement, which means that a lot of the time we won't have anything to do on turn one. So we can just play these temples on turn one to scry and hopefully find Garuda, and then three Yavimaya Coast. The rest of the sideboard is three Negates for, you know, what we need Negate for, three Agonizing Remorse. We can't play Duress or Thoughtseize again in order to comply with Garuda, so this is the best hand disruption thing we can play instead. Eliminate to destroy creatures and walkers. Extinction Event. 
And we have Destiny Spinner to make our creatures uncounterable against the control decks. And then we also have Ashen Rider. We may need to just like destroy something specific. So this can come in in those matchups. So that's Garuda combo. Hopefully the deck doesn't suck. It's been a while since anyone's actually won with it. So let's go ahead and run our event with Garuda. All right, we're on the play, reveal Garuda. All right, multiple ramp spells and Garuda, we're good, keep. So let's go Temple of Mystery, trigger. I don't want Clever Impersonator because I want to mill into it. Although if our opponent plays some kind of big spell, maybe I want it. It really depends on what our opponent's doing. But I think in general, I just want to bottom anything that's not more proactive. So back to our opponent. Also, our opponent is a Gigantha deck. Den of the Bugbear. So this is probably Raksak. Looks like it. Drew Colagon. Well, that's one of the worst draws in our deck. All right, play this. Play Paradise Druid. And then pass back to them. So obviously not blocking this. Down to 19. Swamp. Plays Blood Tithe Harvester. So these are only hexproof for as long as we don't tap them. So we want to just not tap them as much as possible. So Scry. Wolf of Haven on top. We don't want that. Paradise Druid. Pass the turn. We have Garuda next turn. Opponent attacks with both creatures, no blocks. We go to 15. Mayhem Devil. All right. Well, hmm. I can actually play Colgon here, but it's probably better to just play Garuda. All right. Aether Hub, trigger. Let's go for Garuda. Guy Ruda, trigger. We milled over a Wisp Weaver Angel and a Spark Double. So let's grab Spark Double. Spark Double enters as Garuda. And then we get another Garuda trigger. We milled over Wisp Weaver. So let's grab Wisp Weaver. Trigger, blinking this one. Use the ability, trigger again. Grabbing Spark Double. Comes back as Garuda. Mill again. Get back, let's see, uh, Undercover Operative. So this one will enter as a copy of this one because it's not legendary. Trigger again. And then looks like we bricked on the last one. All right, so pass back to the opponent. We have a 7-7, seven, seven, a 4-4, four, four, a 6-6, six, six, an 8-8, eight, eight, and another 8-8. Eight, eight. And for our opponent, we milled over a whole bunch of stuff, including Kroxa, but I don't think that's going to be enough. Witch's Oven. Another Witch's Oven. Plays another land. Mm-hmm. No attacks. All right, back to us. Not even killing off the Paradise Druids. All righty then. Well, let's just play Colagon. Black, red, color, 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 color. Dragon Lord Colagon. Go to combat. Attack with everything except for this Paradise Druid because they can just shoot it. So they have three blocks, plus they can gain three off of food. So it's not exactly lethal, but it's, you know, pretty good. Blockers. 8-8 eight, eight Garuda. 8-8 eight, eight Garuda. They have to block here. Sacks the Witness. They're shooting us. They found another Devil and Blood Tithe. Then these two die. Oh, the cat can come back. Right. I didn't realize they milled a cat over. So that's one, two, three four damage to us right now or more although if they play the second devil they take 10 from colagon right yeah all right they're at five if they play another devil they die cast devil colagon trigger boom game one down all right what do we want versus the rack sack deck i probably want extinction event to kill their odd creatures and maybe ashen rider since kind of the only card that matters is mayhem devil and then what am i cutting so the Warping Whale is mostly irrelevant. What is this counter? Claim the Firstborn is irrelevant. They might bring in other threatened effects. Also kind of irrelevant. Never kills Cat while they have Oven out. Pretty sure this just like doesn't hit anything. So cut that and cut. I'm not sure to what extent I can cut these clones. I probably don't have the time to like value play the Progenitor Mimic in this matchup. Although maybe I do. I don't know. Maybe I don't need Colagon. Like as a two of, hmm. I guess like Alter Ego is the worst clone. Eliminate also kills the devil, which is also relevant. Let's cut one Colagon and one more Ego. All right, submit that. This hand's unkeepable, so we'll mull this. All right, let's see. Two lands and one, and they're both pain lands. That sucks. Well, let's see. I don't want to go to five. Spark Double is only you control, but Alter Ego is anything. I could keep this and bin one of the Garudas, I guess. I guess if the other one gets Thought Seized, that's a problem. Although if they Thought Seize this, they'll probably just take Karyatid. All right, keep bin a Garuda. Opponent has Mold to four. Wow. All right. Sulfurous Springs into Thought Seize. I imagine they just take Karyatid. Yeah, Karyatid gone. All right, Wolf of Haven's okay. So Yavamai Coast pass. Cauldron Familiar, second land. 
All right, Llanowar Waste, and then just Wolf Willow. I don't think it matters which one, but green. All right, Wolf Willow Haven, one of these. Then back to them. Another cat, then we go to 16. All right, do we draw a land? No. Well, just put Garuda in our hand then. Back to them. Unlucky witness. Man, if we draw a land, we just blow them out. We're at 14. No lands. Back to them. Take three down to 11. Man, just still no lands. We're just getting mono screwed. All right. Well, back to them. What am I ditching? The Wisp Weaver Angel. Yep. Another three down to eight. Still no lands. Jesus. All right. Back to them. Discard Vizier. Can we draw an untapped land? No, apparently we can't. Pass back to them. Tap land. Attack, we go to two. Un yeah, okay. We just got mono screwed. Wow. So heavily mono screwed. All right. Game three. We have 22 lands in our deck. And yeah. All right, whatever. Variants. Part of magic. So let's see. Nah, I guess I just keep this the same. Submit. Only one land again. So molt. All right. Two land or three lands with karyatid. So let's keep and put Colgon back. Leyline of the Void. That doesn't actually work, I believe. Yeah. So Leyline of the Void doesn't actually do anything against us. So land our wastes go. Because of the way that Garuda is mill, it the way Garuda is worded, it this this kind of graveyard hate doesn't actually stop it. Well, now they just take Karyatid again. All right, Crystal Grotto trigger Paradise Druid on top, and then back over to them. Witch's Oven, Cauldron Familiar. All right, so Crystal Grotto trigger, huh? Now, it doesn't work because they just keep sacking it. So this only works if they play Mayhem Devil next turn. I just need to find more lands. So let's bottom that and then filter into green, play Paradise Druid, and then over to them. And if I don't find a land, I guess I'm just playing Spark Double and copying Paradise Druid. Shieldred's Edict, Edicting our guy. Thoughtseize takes Undercover Operative, sure. And then we take one from the cat. Well, now we basically just have to draw three lands in a row, right? Put Garuda in our hand, go. I think we're just going to lose to Monastery again. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, we're so dead. We have to draw literally three lands back to back, and I think even then it's too slow to beat them. What's the clock here? It's three down to 12. No, actually it's plus one every turn with the, the cat in the oven. So it's four a turn. And that's assuming they draw no other creatures, which they're going to. And they get to flip reflection over. So yeah, there's no way. We, we just lose this game. Oh, there's a double. Well, we drew carry it did, but it doesn't even matter. We're still going to lose. Well, what a crappy first series of games. We did our cool thing and then just got mono screwed twice in a row. So hopefully the next matches go better. All right, we're on the play. Another Gigantha deck. All right, we've got Land, Land, Wolf, Willow. This is uncastable in our hand, but this hand's actually kind of bad, right? We just have the one piece of ramp and no way to actually get up to Garuda. We can't even Warping Whale. And we want all of these cards in our deck and not in our hand. All right, let's mold this. All right, sure. Keep this and put back Colagon. Temple of Mystery, trigger. Warping Whale, I guess it's ramp. So keep it on top. Back to them. Mountain, Soulscar Mage. All right, so it's the Pia deck. I could just eat that, but I feel like it's more important to just get mana going. But then what am I even doing after that? I get mana and then what? I don't have any mana next turn anyway. Yeah, all right, let's just, uh, let's just exile this. Back to them. Kumano. And then another Soul Scar Mage. All right. Well, can't do anything here. So grab Garuda from our sideboard and then prepare to get Mana Screwed again. Swift Spear enters as a 2 3. Pia, take 3, go to 16. Why does Moto force you to choose no blockers when you have no blockers? All right, we just po can't possibly get through this. Yeah, we're just dead. So let's concede this. Looks like Mana is a big issue for this deck. So yeah, Extinction Event, eliminate. And then that's all we want. And then we cut. One Colagon, and then three Altered Egos. All right, submit that. I guess there's an argument for this to block, but it doesn't even block that well. There's also these to counter their Impulse cards, but again, we just kind of need to ramp and, and go off. A whole bunch of lands and Wolf Willow. Well, at least we have all our lands, so I will keep this. Let's go Temple of Mystery, Scry. I'm going to bin that, obviously. Go back to the opponent, Soul Scar Mage. All right, Crystal Grotto, Trigger, Extinction Event on top. Wolf Willow Haven, this one. Then over to them. Plays another Soul Scar and plays Swift Spear. All right, this Extinction event's going to be really good. Oh no, I don't have Black Mana. Oh no, I have to play Temple of Malady tapped. That sucks. All right, Temple of Malady, trigger, bottom that, and then just get Garuda in our hand for this turn. All right, at least I can do it next turn. And then on the following turn, I can play Garuda. Reckless Impulse, triggering prowess on everything. 
impulses into Rens Resolve and Pia. Six to us, we go to 12. All right, so Extinction Event, choose Odd, eat your board, and then play Temple of Malady tapped. Spark Double, put it on the bottom. Back to them. Plays Rens Resolve, finds another land so they can play Pia. All right, Garuda time. Guy Ruda, trigger. Mill, aw, oh, we bricked. All right, grab Sylvan Karyatid. Back over to them. We got another one, so we can try again next turn. We also have Altered Ego. Four mana, Showdown of the Scalds. Grabs a bunch of this stuff. Shocks in a land, gets a Thopter. Are they going to chain to the rocks, our Garuda? Sure. Makes sense, because if we only had another clone, we wouldn't be able to clone it. And they attack with the Thopter. We go to 11. All right, let's try again. Guy Ruda, trigger. Wisp Weaver Angel, trigger the Angel. Target Garuda. Blink. Do it again. Grab another Wisp Weaver Angel. Trigger. Blink Garuda. Garuda trigger. Grabbing Undercover Operative. Yeah, Undercover Operative. Comes out as a copy of Wisp Weaver. Blinks the Garuda. Do it again. Grabbing... Oh, I can grab their creatures as well. I didn't even realize that. So if I grab Colagon right now, they're dead. Because that's 6, 10, 14, 18 in the air. All right. Grab Colagon. Go to combat. Swing. Boom. All right. Um, huh. The only possible thing I would want to change is to switch Colagon back in for the last Ego, but I don't think I want to do that either. All right, just run it back. We do have Karyatid, and then we're out of colored mana after we use Aether Hub, but then we have Eliminate to kill guys, but we're just like missing land drops. And what I'm realizing playing this deck is you just want to constantly hit land drops because this hand is three mana away from actually casting Garuda. It's also like Karyatid's the only thing making colors in the hand, although that's probably fine. Let's mold this. Boy, this hand's even worse. Yes, yeah, so I'm doing what? I'm scrying and then I'm warping a a creature probably. All right, let's keep this and put Culligan back. Mountain does nothing. Prosperous Innkeeper, right? Eh? All right. Temple Malady. They're going to just play with Fire Us, sure. Spark Double on the bottom. Back to them. Plays a Monastery Swift Spear. Plays this tapped. I think it's more important to just kill this than it is to play Innkeeper. Although that could be wrong. Hmm. Yeah, all right, let's just kill it. Exile this. Back to them. Third land. Plays Bone Crusher Giant Hard Cast. All right, let's just get Garuda. And then back over to them. I can actually alter to copy this and then just block it. Showdown of the Scalds. Another Showdown of the Scalds. So now I actually can't block it, really. But it's more mana efficient to do this. I guess, no. If I Innkeeper now, I get to Doom Depths next turn. So let's play Innkeeper. Trigger this. And then just play something else. I don't know. Aether Hub. Then over to them. So they get to play spells and then basically put counters on the Bone Crusher. Showdown of the Scalds puts another counter on Bone Crusher. More Scalding Time. They have a one drop that they can play. So they can go like Swift Spear and then put another counter on Bone Crusher. Soul Scar Mage put another counter. I think it's actually more worthwhile to keep this Innkeeper around rather than blocking with it because the Garuda will just gain me a bunch of life. All right, so back to us. So let's play a land and then this one blue this 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 cast garuda all right garuda triggers we found spark double so get back spark double and copy garuda getting back vizier of many faces copying this garuda trigger again auto yield to the life gain wisp weaver angel blinking the original garuda so flicker mill again grabbing another spark double so this spark double i'm actually going to copy the angel and then blink Garuda. Blink. More triggers. Grabbing another Wisp Weaver. All right, they have conceded the match. All right, we took down Boris Pia. Let's move on to round number three. So yeah, I'm learning that you cannot keep hands that have like two lands and a mono ramper. You have to keep hands with more lands in them so that you just have a land every turn to play Garuda on time. Although we did still lose match one to just getting unbelievably mono screwed, but what can you do? Well, I'm having fun. We are on the draw for round three. Uh, three lands, but no other ramp sources. I guess the Crystal Grottos can, like, scry us, but without being able to do anything, this is still bad. Let's mold this. Three lands with Sylvan, Karyatid, and Garuda in hand. All right, keep this. Put Wisp Weaver Angel back. Beseju into an elf, probably Nykthos. So this is going to be rough. Temple of Malady, trigger. Put that on the bottom. Back to them. Oath of Nyssa gets a forest. You should probably play the scry land on your Garuda turn. Should I, though? Like... You're pretty likely to hit. All right, Aether Hub, Karyatid. They have a lot of ramp going here, so we're probably just going to get overwhelmed. If they just, like, drop Storm here or whatever. Another Elf, Troll. All right, lots and lots of ramp. All right, well, Aether Hub, 
and then play a Karyatid. We're one mana away from going off with Garuda. So if we just draw an untapped land, we can Garuda next turn. All right, is this Storm? No, Cavalier. Cavalier, they didn't hit Nykthos or a Storm. All right, Troll attacks us. That's fine. Land? It is a land. All right, Garuda. Garuda trigger. All right, so Wisp Weaver Angel. This unfortunately mills them as well. So if they if we don't win this turn, they get access to Storm the Festival. So Wisp Weaver Angel, trigger, Blink Garuda. All right, mill again. Grabbing back Altered Ego. Altered Ego copies the Angel. Then we Blink Garuda. All right, mill. Hitting another Wisp Weaver Angel. Trigger, Blink Garuda. Trigger, another Wisp Weaver Angel. Garuda, Blink. More Garuda triggers. All right, we bricked, unfortunately. Ooh, bricking here was a big issue. How, did we mill Storm over? Of course we did. All right, so they're main decking Sky Sovereign. All right, I guess I'm putting back Prosperous Innkeeper. So trigger that. And then I suppose we just pass and we can try to go off again next turn. We also just have a bunch of flying, although they can block it. Seven mana, seven mana. Oh, they have Cityscape Leveler in their hand, okay. No, so they can leveler the Garuda and then we can't copy it. All right. Uh, how much mana do we have after that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we draw another untapped land, I can get the Garuda out of my command zone. Hmm, do I block this? Huh. Then they just like put something really good back on top of their deck. So no. All right, it hits us. Drawing, Karyatid. Well, let's see. I can play two clones and copy Cityscape Leveler twice, right? Or no, I'm short on that as well, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can play a clone and copy a leveler, but I don't get the cast trigger, and then their leveler just kills it in combat next turn. So I definitely have to put Garuda in my hand. So the only question is, I guess I could copy their Cavalier, right? So, all right, so let's get Garuda back. So Power Stone, Mana, and Mana. So Garuda into our hand, and then what? How much damage do I have to block to live? They have 12 power of Trample plus Cavalier, so I can just chump Cavalier with anything. It doesn't matter and then take 12 here. So I do have to be able to block this. So it's probably correct just to not attack. So clever impersonator, copying Cavalier. We milled two clones and lands. So let's put Lanor away. So let's, I guess let's just put Oduar into play and then resolve that. I guess I can play Karyatid right now. It's effectively the same amount of mana. All right, play Karyatid. It triggers the innkeeper to get life and then back over to them. All right, so swing, swing, swing. What's leveler hitting? One of the angels, sure. So I can actually block and kill their old growth troll, although I don't want to do that because that gives them more mana. So let's block here, and then I need to chump block this thing. So let's block here and take eight and go to five. All right, let's do that. So Cavalier's bump, and then we go to five. Not sure what the holdup is here. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're at five. What are they playing? Kiora. And then they just untap Cavalier. Yeah. All right. So Garuda. And then I have to pay one Karyatid. Garuda. Let's do it again. Gain a life. Well, we got Colagon. So we actually bricked. Wow. All right. We bricked. Colagon. What do I do here? I can send all the flyers at Kiora. Let's say I just attack them with Garuda. So the problem is if I attack them with anything that allows them to block with Cavalier... They can just like Cavalier Storm the Festival back on top of their deck or something, and then potentially we can just lose the game. So I cannot attack Cavalier with anything that can kill it. If I just swing with the Wisp Weaver Angels, they just block one of them and they only take four. And the problem is if I don't attack, then they just attack with Cityscape, kill Garuda. We have three Garudas already, two Garudas already in the graveyard, which means there's only one left in our deck. Hmm. Although if they attack, I can just block with Cavalier and get it back and then try again next turn. So let's see, what are they doing? This is five mana to embalm, right? Yeah, so I can't embalm it with the Power Stones. So they attack with the Leveler and kill Garuda, right? And then I block with Cavalier. I have enough to block the rest of their board. So yeah, I guess I just pass. They found Nykthos, F. Here come all the storms. They have multiple storms too. Troll and Llanowar Elves, more mana, so they untap Nykthos. As long as they don't hit Karn, we're good. They just have one more Storm, right? Or do they have two? They have two more. Storm again, more Elves. All right, and then they just have enough El... Oh, so Nykthos again. Oh, man, they, have they still didn't even tap it the second time? Jesus Christ. All right. Well, they only have 12 cards left in their deck, so I'm pretty sure they're going to find Karn. Yeah, there's Karn. There's Kiora. <sighs> 
And this only counts, oh, this counts creatures and planeswalkers though, right? So if they cast anything, Chain Veil, they may just forget about this. Although if they do, they can just go to attacks and then kill it. Chain Veil, Chain Veil, Chain Veil, Chain Veil. Yeah, all that happens, sure. How would they kill it? They can just attack with Leveler and kill it. Cast another Kiora, take 10. So now they can just untap Nykthos, go to combat, kill the Colagon, and then continue. Wait, they're still going? Karn. Oh, they, they just have a leveler in their sideboard, right? Because this leveler's from the main. Pestilent Cauldron. Yeah. Pestilent Cauldron's back Karn Kiora. Mm-hmm. Untap Nykthos. Make a bunch of mana. Karn for something. I don't know. Eats a Power Stone. Sure. I guess they can just keep looping Burst as well. They don't actually have to... No. Yeah, they can just keep looping Burst, right? They do eventually... Oh, uh, Cityscape Leveler. Yeah. Then Kill Colagon. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make him play it out. Why not? Seems like we're doing it the long way. Man, imagine if I'd had just two extra mana on my turn to cast Spark Double, or you know, we didn't brick twice. All right, so after a bunch of stuff happened, we're dead. So let's just concede here. Sideboarding. I want Extinction Event. I kind of want Eliminate in order to kill Elves and Kiora, but maybe I don't care about that. Ashen Rider is good too. Agonizing Remorse is also good to take the important stuff out of their hand, and Negate is definitely important because all the most important cards are negatable, except for Cavalier, but Storm, Karn, and Kiara are all negatable. So then the question is, what are we cutting? Again, I think Altered Ego is probably the worst clone. Warping Whale can kill Elves, so I don't want to get rid of that. Uh, the Life Gain from Innkeeper is completely irrelevant. I don't need the second Colagon. This is not going to work either. Is Hand Disruption even good? Probably. So then I have to do what? I have to cut like three clones. So I don't know how much I can afford to reduce our own Garuda plan, but it's either this or it's the same thing, but with Agonizing Remorse not in here and clones in here instead. So let's run this. No lands, Mole. All right, that's fine. So we keep this and put back Spark Double. So land and pass. Plays Oath of Nyssa. Gets Kiora. Hmm. I can just Agonize them now, but let's not. Let's just go land Karyatid. And then next turn, I will just land Karyatid, hold the gate up, and then agonize next turn, maybe. Two mana for Wolf Willow. All right, Aether Hub triggers. Hmm. All right, Karyatid, and then just hold up, negate. Seiju, Wolf Willow on there, sure. Plays Kiora, negate that. Hmm. So if I play Wolf Willow, I need to play Wolf Willow this turn in order to get Giruda from my sideboard. But I can't do both that and play Agonizing Remorse. So I guess I get Garuda. Okay, so like if I, let's say I Agonizing Remorse them right now. They could have just multiple spells that that it doesn't matter which one I take. So yeah, let's just take Garuda, then over to them. So Colagun's in our hand, which means we can't actually win on the spot. Three mana. They have a second Kiora. Apparently I should have negated the Wolf Willow. Cavalier, they draw, they mill what? No Nykthos and no Storm. Hmm. All right, play Garuda. Let's go for it. Triggers, getting back. Well, that sucks. I have to get back. Yeah, so I don't add anything to the board. I could get Clever Impersonator copying Kiora, untap this land and agonize them. Now that just seems bad. Let's just Garuda and then keep going. All right, do it again. We bricked. Oh my God, we bricked on the second one and they got and then put Storm in their graveyard. All right, pass the turn. I at least have Clever Impersonator for next turn, assuming we get a next turn. They do have Storm Mana. They have exactly enough. Okay, they just have Storm anyway. What did they just storm into? Nothing? Like, how did they hit nothing? Cavalier. Um, if I block this, they just storm again? Or just get Nykthos back? Yeah, let's just not block. All right, so I actually can't haste this, so let's just attack Kiora right now. And if they want to block with Polychronos, they can. Swing at Kiora. All right, trigger. Then we play the Angel. Hmm. Angel blinks this, but if I play Clever Impersonator to blink it, I get to agonize them. But again... They have two storms in their yard, right? So I can't get rid of both of them. All right, let's just play Wisp Weaver. Wisp Weaver, target Garuda, blink, mill. We bricked again. Jesus Christ. All right, back to them. They have storm mana, so they can flash it back. Storm from the graveyard. Pelucranos and another land. Plays another land. Plays elf. All right, back to us. All right, I can copy Wisp Weaver and then blink this again. So blue, I guess I should, I guess I should play Crystal Grotto first. Yeah. Crystal Grotto, Scry. All right, that's fine. Blue, blue, colorless, this one. Clever Impersonator. Enter as a copy of Wisp Weaver Angel. Blink Garuda. So mill over, hit another Wisp Weaver. I can take back their Cityscape Leveler and then they don't have it. 
for next turn. Hmm. Now I can agonize it out of their graveyard. It's fine. So let's take Wisp Weaver Angel. Trigger, blink Garuda, get back Garuda. Trigger, keep one legend, getting Progenitor Mimic. All right, they've conceded to that. So yeah, I think these hand disruption spells are actually just garbage. Let's not even bother with them and just keep in uh, Innkeeper just for the treasure and then two more Egos. Oh, not Egos. Um, Vizier's anything, right? Yeah, so Vizier. And these are only your... No, these are anything as well. I guess actually... Let's bring these in. Yeah, all right, submit. We have Ramp, we have Garuda, and Besage you to maybe to pick off Nykthos. All right, I'll keep this. It is still too slow though, but what can you do? All right, land and go. Nykthos, Wolf Willow Haven, and then they're just going to attack us. Sure. All right, uh, this one, take a damage from this and cast Sylvan Caryatid. Go. Another land. Five mana for Cavalier. I probably do just have to kill Besage you now. So the issue is I need to play this, but then I also need to have mana for next turn. And this tap land is preventing that. They get to make five, six, seven, and potentially more if they have Kiora. Although they would have played Kiora already if they had it. Hmm. I think I just have to ensure that I get Garuda next turn. So play Paradise Druid, play tap land, uh, bottom that, and then over to them. Plays an elf, so then they nick those for six, Kiora, then they untap it, and then nick those for seven. They have eight mana total. Karn. All right, Karning four. The Stone Brain, and then they can just Stone Brain Garuda out of our deck. God damn it. Well, we just lose. Apparently, I was supposed to besage you the Nykthos. So now what? Can't get either of these off the board. Oh, wait, no. We still have a Garuda in our companion zone. Okay, so we're not just strictly dead. Although, if I put it in my hand right now, then they can just get the Stone Brain back and Stone Brain us again. So I have to wait until I can do it all in one turn. So I can besage you Nykthos, and then Yavko, Spark Dull, and then play Undercover Operative and Cop, or Cop... Play Spark Double and copy Sylvan Caryatid. Okay, so I have to stop them in their draw step, I guess. Actually, let me think about this. How much mana does this make right now? It makes seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's, it, yeah, it has to be correct. I was only thinking like, what if they target it with Kiora? But it's almost certainly correct to just blow it up. And then they'll have access to four, six, seven, eight. All right, so Yavamaya Coast, uh, blue, color, color, color. Spark Double copying Sylvan Caryatid. And then pass, and then draw step, besage you the Nykthos. They just have another Nykthos. Okay. I'm one short of being able to get Garuda next turn. Tormod's Crypt. Not really sure why they would want that. Flashback Storm. Old Growth Troll and Prolucranos. Plays Oath of Nyssa. Cavalier of Thorns. And they have the mana left over to do that. Sure. Draws another card. Plays Elf. And then we get hit by Cavalier, and I cannot afford to block that. So we go to eight... I'm one short of being able to Garuda immediately. Ashen Rider. I'm one... No, I'm, I have exactly enough for Ashen Rider. How does that help me? This gets rid of any permanent, right? So I, I target Nykthos, but then I'm just dead on board because I have to tap all my creatures to play it. Targeting Cavalier, I also die to the board. So I have to put Garuda in my hand. If they have another Karn, they Stone Brain it. But if they have another Karn, we lose anyway. So I go put Garuda in my hand. And then I'm forced to block, let's see, if I block both of these, I still have to block Pelucranos. So I have to block all three. And then I don't have enough mana to actually cast Garuda next turn. No, I can use the 1-4. No, the 1-4 doesn't block these either. Undercover Operative, copying a Cavalier. And then I have that to block, that to block, that to block, and that to block. So I go block, 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 and then take 7 and all my mana dorks die, and then I'm still dead. Unless I hit a land off of Cavalier. So, yeah. Oh, but I have to take blue damage in order to play Operative, right? Yeah, so Aether Hub taps for blue. Yavamaya Coast, I go to seven. I play, I guess I can pop Blast Zone and kill all the elves if they choose to attack with them. But, yeah, all right, so blue, blue. But then I don't get Garuda in my hand this turn, right? I need to get Garuda in my hand this turn. Because if I'm blocking with all of this, then I don't have Garuda next turn. So three mana Garuda, and then another four mana to play this, and then I'm dead on the board. I guess they're not necessarily guaranteed to attack with everything, but let's be let's be real. They're going to attack with everything. Maybe not the elves, but everything else. So Garuda in hand, three blockers, block, block, block. And then just I have to cross my fingers that I draw an untapped land, basically, is the only possible way out of this. So Garuda, this one... This one, this one. Yeah, and then we just pass, triple block, hope to draw an untapped land. 
Only possible way out. All right, pass back to them. They are going directly to combat. All right, so they're just gonna attack with everything. So then I have to block all their guys. Yeah, so block here, block here, block here, and we take seven. Mm-hmm, all right. Untap land off the top, 18 mana. Oh, they just have another Karn, all right. On to round number four. All right, we're on the play. Uh, this hand's absolutely abysmal, Moldus. Uh, this hand is also abysmal because we only have one land. I guess we're keeping this and putting back Spark Double. Oh, I have to put back another card as well. So the the clone. All right, Temple of Malady, trigger another Scry Land. Do I actually want that? I guess. All right, keep it on top. Over to them, Swamp. All right, Temple of Mystery, trigger another Temple. Uh, at this point, I don't want that. So pass to them. Croxa, huh. I will discard Warping Whale, that's fine. All right, Crystal Grotto, trigger. So I can Companion Garuda into my hand and then they can just Thought Seize it maybe, but what else am I gonna do? Like, I'm not just gonna not get it. Besage you, that can go on the, hmm. I guess I'd Besage you a Fable if they played that, right? So I guess I'll keep it on top and then get Garuda over to them. Third land, there's Fable. So stop on your draw step. Let's go land, then pass. Stop and draw step, blow up Fable. All right, take the hit from the Shaman. Another land for our opponent. Plays another Fable. Plays Misery's Shadow. All right, it's with Die. Good. So Prosperous Innkeeper, Aether Hub, and then pass. All right, if they don't find a Thought Seize, we get to Garuda next turn. Discards Bone Crusher and a land. Okay, Fatal Push. That's good. I thought they were about to Thought Seize us. Oh, they are Thought Seizing us. All right, well, we lose the game. Unless we draw a Garuda off the top. Oh, and you have more plays after that. Or they're just pumping Misery's Shadow. Doesn't matter. We're dead in two hits anyway. Oh, Croxa comes back. Mm-hmm. So we literally have to draw Garuda off the top. If we don't, we lose. And a Bone Crusher. All right. Garuda off the top. No. I can copy Croxa, but I'm still done on the board. All right. So what do I need? Basically, the main thing that they have that interacts with us is Thoughtseize. So I should bring in Negate and then just try to hold Negate open. I can wait till, like, I have five mana to get Garuda in hand plus Negate. So I think that's it, right? And then this card also counters Thoughtseize, so I want to keep that. So let's spin Colagon and two Egos, and we're good. Yeah, all right, submit that. All right, we have two lands, but they're both colorless lands. Otherwise, this hand would be fine. I guess I have, what, two shots at scrying into a colored land? But then that also means if I brick on... Even if I find the second one, I'm still not casting anything on curve. If I find any third land, then I get to filter into green... All right, I'll keep. And then Crystal Grotto will just bin any any card that's not a land. So Crystal Grotto, trigger, bin that, go to the opponent. Tap land. All right, Temple of Mystery, trigger, still binning anything that's not a land. Bin that, back to the opponent. Black Cleave Cliffs, opponent plays Reckoner Bankbuster, sure. All right, Crystal Grotto, trigger, Colligan on the bottom, and then uh, Caryatid over to the opponent. Third land, Fable the Mirror Breaker, back to us. Ooh, we drew Garuda, all right. Aether Hub, Trigger, Paradise Druid, another Paradise Druid. Mm, no, should I? This is six mana already, so I can just hold this open for Thoughtseize. Yeah, so let's just pass with Warping Whale open to counter Thoughtseize. My opponent is just frustratingly taking forever to take every single priority pass. Come on, can't be that hard. Discarding Bone Crusher, Colligan's Command. Tapped Castle Lockwain. Shaman attacks. Lock with Caryatid. Black, Black, Red. Another Red. Shieldred. Sure. I don't think I'm supposed to warping into a Scion here. So just untap and play Garuda. So yeah, Shieldred trigger. All right, Aether Hub. See, just like every single priority pass, our opponent takes like 30 seconds or more to just wait around, not doing anything. They're literally tapped out and could just F6 or at least, yeah, they could literally just F6 here, but they're just not doing it. All right, blue, blue, colorless, 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 colorless. Play Garuda. Trigger Garuda. What do we mill? Another Garuda. All right, so Garuda, trigger again. Bring back Clever Impersonator and keep the Garuda chain going. I could copy their Shieldred, but probably better to just keep the Garuda chain going. So Impersonator comes back as a Garuda. Uh, let's keep the copy Garuda. Ego, man, we're bricking pretty hard here. All right, bring back Ego. It copies Garuda. And then we keep the one that is Impersonator. Trigger again, Undercover Operative. All right, copy Garuda, keep the one that sh has a shield counter. Trigger again. Vizier of, man, Jesus Christ. Like, we're just not hitting any Whisper, the Angels or Spark Doubles here. All right, 
bring back Vizier, copy Garuda. It gets the copy with the shield token, really? Huh. All right, keep this. Garuda again, trigger, undercover operative, sure. Copy Garuda. Oh, I should have kept the one that had two shields, whatever. Vizier, copy. I bricked on my own graveyard, really? I bricked on my own graveyard. Okay, so I just get back a Kroxa and make them discard a card. All right, Kroxa it is. How did we brick that hard? Every single card that we hit was a clone that couldn't copy Legendary. We never hit Angel and we never hit Spark Double. Insane. Well, we did give them a handy dandy Kroxa that they can unearth, although that's not too bad. What would be bad is if they kill our Garuda. They discarded another Kroxa. All right, back to their turn. We got to try to Progenitor Mimic and do it again. So Reflection flips over. What do you got, opponent? Croaks out of the graveyard. I guess I'll discard Paradise Druid. They play a tap land. No attacks. All right, shielded triggers. We drew an angel so I can angel the Garuda. All right, so six, nine. I probably shouldn't tap creatures if I don't have to. So let's see, white, white. Play the Wisp Weaver Angel. So we should finish going off this turn, right? Like we have to. There's How can we possibly brick at this point? He says right before he bricks. Blink Garuda. Oh, right. The Garuda is a copy. F. I forgot about that. Well, what am I copying then? Shieldred? I wouldn't have been able to play another Garuda anyway because I'm one short of... No, I'm multiple short of grabbing it from my command zone. Huh. <sighs> hmm. What do I do here then? Just copy Shieldred, I guess? All right, pass. So, lesson learned. If you Garuda your graveyard, if you Garuda and get a clone back, you need to keep a Garuda, not the clone. So that if the angel blinks it, you still have a Garuda. Well, that's my bad, and that's going to cost me the game. Thought sees us, sure. Graveyard, Trespasser, eating a Vizier, I guess. No, just eating Progenitor Mimic for some reason, sure. They can also copy it if they want. Or they can copy Blood Tithe. Attacks with Shieldred, Kroxa, Shaman Token. So I have to discard Warping Whale. And then they can get Kroxa back anyway, so I guess they just trade with Shieldred and then Wisp Weaver on the Goblin Token. So I was planning on Vizierring something, like Reflection, but now that they have Blood Tithe Harvester, then it doesn't matter what I Vizier into. So block here. Sacks the treasure, copy Blood Tithe, Blood Tithe kills the angel. Could have done that pre-combat, and I wouldn't have had another block, but just didn't. Did you miss Blue-White Control? Yeah, we played that a while ago. So pretty much has to be Garuda off the top. I don't think I can survive another hit. Kroxa is going to be like chump here and then they can copy graveyard trespasser and attack for nine as well over here at the at how incredibly slow my opponent is being maybe i can actually just clock them out at this point this is just insane how long they're taking between each priority pass look at the difference in time we drew a negate i think my only surviving is put garuda in my hand right now discard the negate to croxa and then try to go off next turn although i think i'm still dead anyway because what else can I do? I can Vizier out Graveyard Trespasser and then gain one life. Also, the Graveyard Trespasser flips if I don't play anything. I can Vizier out Kroxa. They copy Blood Tithe, kill it, then attack with this Kroxa. This isn't even playing a card though, right? Embalming it just returns it to the field. It doesn't actually cast it. No, it must cast it, right? All right, blue, blue, Embalm. Enter as Kroxa. Oh, right, I didn't escape it, did I? So technically, even though I'm bringing it back from the graveyard, it doesn't matter. Huh. Yeah, I forgot about that. You, It's not just returning from the graveyard. Specifically, it's escaping it. Well, I wasn't going to win if I just put Garuda in my hand anyway, or escaped or uh, embalmed into anything. There's, just, I had no way out of that. Because even if I put... So I could have done a couple of things. If I put Garuda in my hand, this flips, then they just copy it, swing. We drain four life just off of the... Or we drained six life just off of the graveyard trespassers, and then we would have just been dead. And if I'd viziered into like the graveyard trespasser, I would have been at 10 life and then just still lost on the board because then I need to Garuda again next turn. All right. Well, that was that. On to round number five. So I could have played these games better by mulling better in the first match because I kept hands that I shouldn't have kept because this deck cannot survive on two lands plus monodork. And then. In that match, I needed to not, I needed to keep the re, the real Garuda and not the clone of Garuda. Although to be fair, milling like half my deck and never hitting Spark Double or Wisp Weaver Angel is kind of nuts. And I also just got Mana screwed out of the first match, so there's that too. Although I got Mana screwed as a result of not mulling into a hand with more lands, so that's not really variance. All right, we're on the draw for the fifth round. 
Only one land, mole that. Three lands, Wolf Willow Haven. All right, and a Garuda in the hand. We'll keep this and put back Angel. Underground River, Thoughtseize. All right, not really sure what the confusion is here. They took Warping Whale. That's the worst card in our hand. All right, Temple of Mystery, trigger. Uh, yeah, keep land on top. Over to them. Another Thoughtseize, very well. Are they just gonna take like Ramp now or are they gonna take Garuda? Paradise Druid, why not take Wolf Willow Haven? So trigger that, put Wolf Willow on here, then over to the opponent. Or heck, Garuda, because we're clearly gonna get there. They bricked on lands too, right? Or no. Yeah, they bricked on a land for a turn as well. No plays from our opponent. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six mana right now. So Malady Temple, uh, I guess bottom that. And then Garuda from Companion to my hand. Then back over to them. Petty Theft, the Wolf Willow Haven. Okay. Then they have no plays. Very well. Let's Wolf Willow Haven this and then play Caryatid. Back over to them. Yes, I realize I just accidentally spent my energy. It doesn't actually matter. Oh, it's Rogues? Okay, sure. Thieves Guild Enforcer. And then another Thieves Guild Enforcer. Mill over Vizier. We milled over Colagon. And we mill Spark Double in a land. Okay. Enabling Death Touch on all these creatures. I don't think I'm going to besage you anything in their deck, right? So play that. And then if I Wolf Willow onto a land, then I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So Wolf Willow on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Blue, blue, color, color, Garuda. All right. Garuda triggers. Finding Spark Double. Spark Double the Garuda. Trigger again. I bricked. I just hit Fairy Mastermind in their deck. All right. Fairy Mastermind it is. Pass to them. So if they have Drown in the lock, they can just drown this other Garuda. They're attacking with everything. So if I just don't block, are they just dead on the backswing? I'm taking 10 here, right? They could have like a Drown to kill like this guy, and then they take eight, and then I get to play another Garuda. All right, no blocks. Hmm. All right, go to combat. Swing, swing, swing. Thieves Guild Enforcer. So we mill, we mill, we mill. So they block one of them. Okay, take eight, go to three. And it's the spark double one, unfortunately. So let's just play another Garuda. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, play a new Garuda. Keep the new Garuda. Trigger. So milled over spark double. I guess I want Wispweaver Angel to block the stupid flyer. Yeah. So Wispweaver. Okay. Trigger targeting Garuda. Then blink. Then mill again. We are actually at lower cards than they are because of all their milling. Vizier copying the Wispweaver. I can just elect to stop when I get too low though. So copy Wisp Weaver, Blink Garuda, mill another four, get that clever impersonator, copying Wisp Weaver, Blink and Garuda, mill again. Ooh, I milled Shieldred over on their side and Progenitor Mimic on my side. Let's just grab Shieldred and then they're very close to just being dead. All right, Shieldred and then pass to the opponent. They go to one and then they can't even use this Underground River on colors. So it cuts them off of blue unless they have another land. What is in their deck, by the way? Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize, Nighthawk Scavenger, Drown, Kaido. All right, so we won. So sideboarding versus Rogues. I guess I want Destiny Spinner to get through counter spells, but that's really it. There's like Eliminate for the small creatures, but whatever. That's, their deck's pretty friggin' slow too. So we just cut uh, one of the Colagons and one of the Altered Egos. All right, let's run that back. Three lands and four clones. That's a mole. One land is definitely a mole. That's another mole. Jesus Christ. All right, keep this. Bin both the clones and one of the warping whales. All right, watery grave shock. We're getting thought seized. Takes warping whale. There's land or waste. So let's let's crystal grotto and see if we're drawing either a land or a two drop ramper. All right, two drop ramper. Keep that on top. Back over to them. So if they thought seize us again, they take wolf willow. We have on curb sylvan carriated at least. Dark slick shores. Back to us. All right, land or waste, and let's play Karyatid. Tap land. Ooh, I can spark double my Karyatid. All right, let's do that. So Crystal Grotto, trigger. I can also just grab Garuda, right? Top this. Yeah, that's more efficient, actually. So let's go green, colorless, Wolf Willow, this Grotto, and then put Garuda in my hand. Then back over to them. They're just not doing anything. So, all right. Thought seize. All right, they take Garuda. Frustrating, but whatever. So play a land. Get energy, spark double, copy, Sylvan Karyatid. Back to you, opponent. Just plays Shieldred. All right. Well, we drew Colagon, so that's something. So 
black, red, play Coligon, go to combat and attack. So they go back up to 10. This isn't even really race them because shield rids six to us per turn and they gain two. And so this is four to them per turn. Go for the throat. All right, tap land. Then we take four and then six from Shieldred going to 11. All right, I guess I'm playing blast zone and taking it all the way up to four counters and then killing Shieldred off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, swings with Shieldred. We go to, and I got to stop in my upkeep so I can kill it. Stop in my upkeep rather. So put charge counters on it. This one, X is currently three. Yep. Done. Then stop on upkeep. Blast zone. All right. Shielder dies. We drew Paradise Druid. Sure. Play Paradise Druid. Back over to the opponent. And they're not doing anything either? All right. Do I start attacking them? No, because they have the 2-3 that can flash in and just block our Paradise Druid. So play Innkeeper. Although they haven't been playing it at any t turn up to this point. I feel like they would have flashed it in before now, right? All right. I guess I attack them. And then if they block, whatever. It's fine. All right, they don't have it. So Fairy Mastermind flash in. Are they going to draw us both a card? Sure, we draw a card and that triggers. All right, over to you, opponent. Soaring Thought Thief. Oh, now they have it. Swing, we mill. They milled over Vizier, so can't block. We take two, we go to five. How much mana do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can embalm and undercover operative. So I need to double copy the Thought Thief, I think. Let's see, they swing, and then their guy grows, and then I can double block this or block Thought Thief. Or maybe I just copy both of them. All right, Undercover Operative. Disdainful Stroke, sure. So then Vizier, blue, blue, what color, color. So the only question is, which one of these do I copy? I think it's Thought Thief, right? No, I guess no. So it, they just attack Mill, and then this boosts their, it boosts their power, right? So I still get to block this, potentially. Although if they have any... So I don't get to block this if they if I copy this one. All right, so copy this one. They just have removal. Yeah, there's the removal. Why didn't they just... Yeah, whatever. All right, so that's removed. We survive at one unless they have another lord. They just have another lord. All right. So I still don't feel like I want eliminate or anything like that. Maybe I want agonizing remorse to get through their counter spells. So I bring that in, bring out ego. Although ego also gets through their counter spells, but it's a worse clone when you're going off. So maybe I just cut Clever and an Undercover Operative, another Undercover Operative, something like that. All right, let's submit that. Bunch of lands and ramp, we're good. And a Destiny Spinner in order to make our guys uncounterable. Trigger Temple of Malady, uh, bottom that. Over to the opponent. Another turn one Thought Seize. Took Destiny Spinner. All right, that changes things a bit. So Karyatid, back to them. Second land, Thought Seize again. Thought sees again. Takes Paradise Druid. All right, Crystal Gato, Trigger, Scry. Whiskweaver Angel on the... Hmm, I was going to say the bottom, but actually... Oh, no, we don't have another white source. I'd have to filter with the Grotto. Yeah, all right, so bottom that. And then Wolf Willow Haven on this one. So really, what are the odds that they have another Thought sees? It's more important just to do this now. Back over to them. Flashes in Thieves Guild. We mill over Agonizing Blast Zone. So Drown in the Lock doesn't counter Garuda, but Disdainful Stroke does. All right, I can't just wait to play it. If they have a counter, they have a counter. What can you do? Because if they don't have a counter, not playing this now is just giving them time to find one. All right, they have Disdainful Stroke. Back to them. Take another one from Thieves Guild. Hmm. All right, Wolf Willow on here. And then Wolf Willow on here. And then next turn, I guess I just play a really big Ego. Flashes in Thought Thief. Yeah, all right. So the Thieves Guild Enforcer gains Death Touch. So let's just make Ego a really, really big Thought Thief. Trigger, eight cards in the yard, and Wispweaver Angel. All right, play Altered Ego for a whole bunch. Copying the Thought Thief, and then back over to them. Fatal Push, okay. Swings more, we take another six, and then if they have a counter or removal for Wispweaver, we're just dead. Uh, yeah, so tap this, tap this, tap this. Filter this into white, and then pay white here. Play Wispweaver. All right, so back over to them. Flashes in Brazen Borrower, which is a 4-1. All right, and then they just have removal. So be it. What a train wreck. So let's see. I think I could have won one more match if I played it a little better, maybe the first one. But overall, yeah, the deck is exactly what I feared. It sucks. It's so fragile. It takes forever to get going. It's usually not until at least turn four that you actually get to go off. With the companion rule change to having to pay another three, it means that you no longer have a guaranteed turn 
four, five Garuda, so you're even slower. Tons of hands have to get mulliganed. You have all of these cards, basically. So all of this stuff, 23 cards in your deck are garbage. They're all trash and don't actually do anything unless you have your Garuda combo going. And you can't side out too many of them when you side into other things. And the restriction means that you're really locked down to what you can play. I don't like splitting up cards like this. This doesn't make sense to me. Warping Whale's cute in that it can counter Storm the Festival, maybe, or like Thoughtseize, but in practice that never actually happened, so I would just not bother with this. I just want more long-term actual ramp, so this should just be like Wolf Willow Haven number four and then another two Paradise Druids. These are, these are pointless. But anyway, that is the end of Garuda, the League.